Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to the American city controlled by Canada. And I'm going to be real, I have no idea how this even works, which is obviously why I'm doing this reaction. Maybe I've been clickbaited, I don't know. But in terms of the con like the context of this, I'm assuming these are American citizens, but then because they're controlled by Canada, do they pay their taxes to Canada? Is it cheaper for the US to like just put it in the hands of Canada? Because it's like obviously so far from the US in a sense. I mean, it's not so far, but it's just like, I mean, there's obviously, there's other US cities that will be on the border. So I don't actually know why this is the case. So, I mean, we're going to see because it's such a weird topic, which is why I'm, I am reacting to this because I love these sorts of videos. But yeah, we're going to learn about, learn about the city. If you're from here, let me know what it's like. I mean, I don't really know what else to say. We're going to check this out. Links are in the description to my Patreon where you can see reactions that I can't post to YouTube. And let's just check out this fascinating place. Right in the middle of US-Canada border is a blip, a mistake, or as some would say, a problem. Due to a mapping error in 1783, this northern Minnesota town is now cut off from the mainland United States, and the only way to get there is to cross into Canada for 50 miles, then cross back through the border into the town of Angle Inlet, USA. But then, two years ago, the border with Canada closed. Oh, damn. So you're basically stuck there. Unless you've got a boat. Really? Trapping the residents in place. But then the border partially opened so long as you have a vaccine and a negative COVID test within 72 hours, which the people in Angle Inlet don't have access to. There is nothing remotely close to a lab and a defibrillator about it close to a hospital you're gonna find up here. But we planned a trip for less than 72 hours to use the same test twice and visit this uniquely placed American oh, wow. city controlled by Canada to find out what their ideas are for liberation. We were stuck in the middle of a blizzard on our way up, so we stopped in the closest city to the border <laughs> to meet with Brian, who operates the plows. What is it, like 40 or 50% of the Canadian population is below us because like Toronto and all the, the capital is down by the lakes, the Great Mad. Lakes. So right. they're south of us too. So these Canadians aren't as tough as they think well, they are. Believe me, there's some tough ones there too, but the Northwest Angle is Minnesota, but you cannot get to it. On, on land unless you go through Canada. And their their entire industries, tourism, fishing, I mean, they don't, you know, they don't get any other income from anything else but people coming up. And so there's a service up there that plows like 30 miles of ice road to service all these resorts. They gotta get fuel to them, they gotta get food and groceries, you know, beverages, all that stuff. So they, they yeah. plow these, these roads up there. In previous years, in order to access their own country. That would be such a satisfying job. Maybe it's like, brain numbing because you're just doing the same thing especially in canada where you're just driving for 30 for 30 minutes non-stop the same you the same scenery 30 minutes forget that probably three hours just the same scenery just plowing the the snow but could be quite satisfying i don't know <laughs> The people of Angle Inlet banded together to plow a road 37 miles long on top of the lake so on the map where where does the ice road start and end to get to the angle like well so last year was the first year it was ever done right oh wow yeah so it's it only was done because of covid because otherwise people would just drive up it's an hour hour 20 minute drive so it started at our resort and then it came out to this corner here because you have to you can't go into canadian waters right Duh. and then come up to get to the northwest angle oh okay so i'm back a day later um I was trying to do this reaction yesterday and my internet was just bugging out so I couldn't do it because it was just lagging and I couldn't watch the video through without it constantly pausing. So we're back. I think he was talking about going through how we, how they couldn't go through the Canadian waters because obviously it's Canadian waters so they've got to go round I assume. But um, let's get back into this reaction. started at our resort and then it came out to this corner here because you, you can't go into Canadian waters, right? There you go. And then come up to get to the Northwest Angle. Unfortunately, record snowfalls this year made the lake impassable. Now they're, um, they have found other means too, like they're, they're doing bomber services. I believe there's some outfit out of Duluth that's flying people in. So they're plowing um, like ice runways for the planes to come in and land and drop people off. How unsafe are ice runways, by the way? Because the idea of landing in summer with these conditions for starters is probably quite hard to do. And sorry, and, and yeah, like just these conditions, but ice runways, that sounds very sketchy. Let's say we have a pretty average sized car and a lot of heart. 
Yeah. How far do you think we can not make very it far. in this weather? Okay. Not, not in a car. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. When you called yesterday, you said you're coming up, and I said, well, there's, they're forecasting a blizzard, so yeah. I hope Jesus. you know what that means. It's kind of amazing that we got this far. Right. <laughs> so can't you say that the map shows the angle? Um, um, I think what's, it's going over there. What is this bridge for, by the way? Was there like a lake here before or something? I'm so confused what this bridge is even for. Hopefully you can get out on the ice. Bro, look at this. You can't see anything. And no one ever saw him again. After a valiant attempt, it was clear that we weren't in fact going to take the ice road. So we took the truck up to the border. Oh, jeez. She's intimidating. Then a long drive through Canada. Finally, America. Wild. But wait, after entering back into the continental US, we had to track down a local checkpoint. Here we go. A few clicks on a touch screen and almost two hours later, we were in. We should be in America. This whole process is something that many residents of the Northwest Angle have to go through twice a day. Our first meeting was with Paul, a resort owner and lifelong resident who had strong opinions about the border inconvenience. Come on in. <laughs> We're trying to figure out how to take this to Wait, is that where someone lives? A court. I guess not. It's just a meeting what a, area. What would you take to court exactly? Holy shit, not being able to go to your own country? That seems like a infringement of your liberty, isn't it? But if I can get a ruling, if I can get somewhere, if you can just get it filed, that will create a lot of tension. This process, among other things, has led some to believe that maybe this part of the world should just be Canada. Instead of building a wall, a new petition is simply asking to redraw the map. There's a petition to the White well House that asked Donald Trump to give it back to Canada. Look, Minnesotans are already honorary Canadians. Why don't you just take all of us? The great walleye war, as it came to be known, ended amicably. I mean, is there a point for any of these places that says maybe it should just be Canada. Would you want to give up your citizenship? Because you can't, because you can't get some bureaucrats together to come up with a simple solution. That's fair. You know, as American citizens, we need to not only follow our laws, but a foreign country's law. Right? Everybody talks about oh, it's the longest undefended border in the world. Try living with it. Dang. And what would be the, a solution to that problem? It's like very inconvenient. Well, a, a solution would just be have a travel corridor. The Oh, what? So you just have a specific like road that is just you're allowed to go through, so it connects you to the US in a sense. That's quite a cool idea. Don't know like the chances of it happening, but I feel like when you've got friendly neighbors with like you've obviously got the US and Canada who are like they get on better than most countries that live alongside each other do. This could most likely work. The idea of a travel corridor could mean a tunnel or a bridge. But so far, the most realistic choice would be to allow residents to travel on the pre-existing roads between the Northwest Angle and the rest of the U.S. without stopping at customs. It could be protected by cameras, transmitters, or other methods to ensure people go where they say they will. I tried to point out the fact that there's the exact parallel on the south side of this lake, and that's the CN rail line. And it goes down at War Road, it runs about 36 miles in the United States, and goes back up in, in Tibet. That's oh, Canada's big east-west line, 23 trains in 24 hours. There's no place else where you have a land crossing, commercial goods going through, and not checking customs. Look overhead, you'll see idling trains right there. So I'm telling people, let's go block the damn train. Treat me like the train. Be Fair a neighbor. Enough. Reciprocate. And, uh, it's not the first time we floated blocking the train. Back during the walleye wars, we also did it. And the FBI called us up about it. Okay. What? Yeah. But that's the thing, people up here, we, you know, we're remote. We don't, we don't, we're not looking for drama, right? We just want to run our business and be law-abiding. Honest to God, right? Look where we've chosen to live. If Paul yeah. were to block the train, the amount of money and crude oil that would stall on the tracks would be alarming. Oh, he's, <laughs> bro, this guy's making a stand. Yeah, all right, so 5,990, that's 45, so that's 40, is that $45,000 a car? How much is that? $646,875,000. That's in one day. Those are, those are numbers that'll make you tingly back here. 
Finding a better method of border crossing for U.S. citizens is a difficult conversation. Let us know in the comments what you think should happen. Maybe this part of the U.S. should just be Canada. A few of the 119 residents in Angle Inlet live on islands, so the local plow crews continue to make ice roads that connect to the mainland. Jesus. One of those island residents, Joe, who happens to live in a literal lighthouse, is an expert on the history of the Angle. The Lake of the Woods goes like seemingly forever north, squiggling between those 14,000 islands. Can you go all the way up there yep. on boat? So the law is in the summer, you could go, you could go here. Yeah. As long as you don't well, touch, yep, yes, Can you as, go? as long as you don't touch land, you could go anywhere. As soon as you touch land, you need a call in. So you could go yep, by all water. the way up there. As well, as long as you don't touch land, you could go anywhere on the lake you want. But in, in the, the winter, summer. you can in, in the winter, they treat ice as land. Huh. Oh, to wow. figure out how two, or actually three countries, got to this point, we're going to need a little history with Chris, or actually with me. I, I am Chris. By just looking at the strange little bump on the top of Minnesota, it doesn't really make sense, right? Well, at the time of its creation, it didn't make Ooh. sense then either. It all started with the Treaty of Paris in 1783. Great Britain and the U.S. had agreed upon a border with Canada on the eastern side of the U.S. that looked like this. However, the border was planned to end at the northwesternmost point of Lake of the Woods because they, for some reason, had that in writing and wanted to stick with it. What is the true northwestmost part of Lake of the Woods? Is it Angle Inlet? Yep. Oh, it is? Yep. So they were not wrong there. Right. Then in 1807, with the Louisiana Purchase, things got tricky. The British government felt that the new border should connect the pre-existing border. I love how it's always the British involved. No matter how long ago this was, it's still the British who've caused all of this. God in the sake. east, straight across the water to the 49th parallel and continue westward from there. But the United States remembered that they owned the northwesternmost point of Lake of the Woods. No one really wanted to relinquish what was in words. To change any wording from the original documentation would be altering the very piece of history that granted the U.S. to be, well, the U.S. It seemed that everyone understood how crazy the map was. Canada and Great Britain even attempted to buy the land, but America, being America, shut it down. It's not perfect, but Angle Inlet is how it was to be. Damn. After being filled in on why this place is actually American, we set out to find Joe's wife, Anita, who had stationed a fish house just feet away from the Canadian border. <laughs> the border here is marked by black poles stuck in the ice. I mean, you're like living five feet from Canada yeah. right now. Yep. You can... And I definitely, you know, Canada. I definitely had the GPS out, making sure I was fishing on the U.S. side. They, they'll check you. I mean, what would happen if you actually, like, let's, Let's say it's super wide out, and you put your house like a couple feet on the Canadian side. What would happen? There's no exceptions. I mean, even if I said, hey, I didn't realize that it's not going to be forgiving. You're breaking right. the law, you know. And that's because the ice is considered land in the winter, correct? Exactly. So in the, the summer, you could go the right summer, over there wherever yep, you want. Yep. Yep. As long as you have your Canadian license, you're fine. It's it's there. When you catch, oh, you, oh, you have a baby. What? You know, when you catch big fish with this ten dollar pole here, the pole literally is big like big fish like this, this, Daddy. But so this is like a little fishing hut. This is so fascinating. <laughs> you have people coming from all over the world to fish, right here, right at the border of Canada and, and the U.S. Yep. Well, they come from all over because this is the walleye capital of. You know the world that people get big walleyes and that's what they come here for trophy fish they they come in musky fish too that's a big thing oh baby not very big it's a sauger while it may look easy to cross the border especially in winter the consequences are no joke one of the prominent modes of transportation around here are the bombardiers. Basically a minivan bred with a snow machine, these special vehicles- <laughs> What the hell? This is so cool. Vehicles ...are essential in the Northwest Angle. However, bombers stopped being made over 40 years ago because they were no longer necessary. Well, maybe they are. When you're seeing this, <laughs> there we go. We met with Angle Outpost resort owner, Jason, as he pulled his fleet into his shop after a long day on the ice. 
It's just a lot of lake to cross, too. I mean, yeah. it's an hour and 45 minutes in one of these things. And like yesterday, I did it, and it sucks when you can't see. It can be dangerous. I mean, if you break down out there or get lost, mm -hmm. and these are old machines, they break down. And so what about, like, the numbers Jeez. this year? Every year it's gone up, gone up, gone up, but this is by far the worst year we've had. I just think it's the worst to have to go through this whole thing, too. Yeah, so the, the, to I mean, the kids from. have to go through the border twice? Yep. So four borders? Jack One. rides the bus a couple times a week, so. You know, we can't go to town to go to a funeral, but they can come across and buy beer whenever they want. That's bullshit. I have a little bit of bitterness towards Canada. I can't help it. Yeah. Hopefully I didn't express too much of it, but. <laughs> <laughs> After another quick rip in the 4x4 across the ice road, we met with Travis, a part owner of the Sunset Lodge and a guy who takes the border very seriously. What if you were to go across the border right now? Football throws away, you walk over, say hello to the Canadians. I doing anything wrong that's gonna keep me out of Canada. I'm taking everything down the line. They say I can't come today, I'm not going today. If I have a couple of drinks, I'm thinking about it. Like, I, I gotta stop, I wanna fish Canada. Not can I safely drive my vehicle home, but that will mess with my ability to do my job in Canada, because I won't be allowed. On a day like today, where it's negative 10 degrees oh. out, raging winds, you kinda have to wonder, like, what are, what are people coming out here for? Yeah, it's a, it's a trophy fish. I mean, the fish of a lifetime. Uh, they call them lifetime fish for a reason. You know, they, you might only get one. As we left the angle, well, once we got unstuck for the final time, it was hard to forget the resilience of the 119 people on Angle Inlet who face a daunting task, standing up to an entire country. Be sure to subscribe and let us... What a wild story. I mean, this is a very rare sort of situation, right? But it is so fascinating to see. This is how people's like day-to-day -day lives are because, because of a rule that was made hundreds of years ago or like a land rule or whatever you want to call it, an agreement that was made hundreds of years ago. I'm a Canadian and I'm, and I'm frustrated too. It seems both our customs people feel they need to flex their muscles. Too bad common sense and common decency is no longer common. Last year I tried to drive up to drive to Arizona and US customs wouldn't let me drive in. However, I could ship my car to the US and I could fly in. Wait, what? Only government people could come up with a plan like that. I grew up 25 miles from the US border and we always used to be treated well. Why? Why is it such a... So it was after 9-11, I guess. They got a lot stricter. I mean, I didn't realise it was like this because obviously it's not the same because obviously it's the United Kingdom. So it's sort of seen as the same country, although they're different countries. But going from Scotland to England or vice versa requires nothing. Like, you can just go through. And again, it is probably a lot different because we're like sort of under the same rules. So that's why. Maybe if you're going from Northern Ireland to Ireland, it's different because Northern Ireland is in the UK. Although it's like next to Ireland. So, I mean, maybe that's a better comparison to do and I don't know how it works there. But um, yeah, it's fascinating to see this. Hopefully enjoy this reaction and let me know if you've experienced this. If you live here on the off chance, you're one of the 100 people who live here. Let me know your situation. But um, this is also a year old, so maybe something's changed. I'm not too sure. But yeah, that's that. Until next time, I subscribe. Peace.